Hey Power Rappers, this is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works, and in today's video, we're going to focus on deep linking, which is the ability to link to the inner sanctums of an application, pull up an individual record right from a link. So stay tuned. Imagine your salesperson receives an email that one of their accounts has changed, or that they have a task to do on a given account. They click on the link. It then opens up a Power App application, but it starts at the home screen. Well, deep linking is going to allow you to not just dump them at the home screen, but navigate to a certain screen, and then navigate to a certain account or task in that screen. And that's what this today's video is all about. So let's begin. So what I've done so far, if I created a basic application, this basic application is whenever I make a, a change on a given account, like this, this Washington first, for example, and I hit save, it's then going to send an email to me at that point that looks a little bit like this right here. Now, I want to go in and actually tell it what app to open up. So we're gonna, do, we're gonna base this video on a few little mini steps, and each step that we do, we're gonna break some stuff and fix some stuff. So that way you can kind of see how do we kind of dig out of certain errors also. All right, so it's some of the common mistakes you might see. First of all, let's find out the link to link to. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my app that I wanna go to, go to details, and there's my link right there. So let me go ahead and copy that link out. And uh, go back and go back to my, my web app here. So I'm gonna put my link where you see this right here. Now the Office 365 connector, if I'm using the V2, is smart enough to actually recognize that this is a link and we'll make that a link also. I'm gonna get rid of 10 ID not because it's hurting things or not because it's helping things, but just because it's, it's not really required and it's one less thing for us to debug in a moment. Okay, so now that I've done that, let me go ahead and just kick that email off. There we go. And let me, let me make sure I pu publish the application so it, it can see the latest and greatest. I'll then uh, go ahead and trigger a save. There we go. And hit save. Okay. That should send me an email. There it is. Next few seconds. And I have my link right there. And I just want to make sure that everything's working beautifully there. All right, perfect. I'm in the home page, but not where I really want to be. So next step is let's get our app ID working. All right, so uh, I'm gonna pass in here, right after my, uh, my play here, I put, a, put a, a question mark, which represents a new parameter being passed in. And we're gonna pass in a parameter here. So I'll call this, this question mark account ID on that side of the double quotes. Then I'm gonna append in the account ID for what I've selected. I can do that by either grabbing the gallery or I can go to uh, form one dot last submit, which is my form on the right there, dot account. That will give me the, the GUID for the account that I just did. All right, now this, is just, this, ha this data happens to be in Dataverse, but it works for SharePoint or works for anything else that you wish to do. All right, so let me go ahead and, uh, and save that. Pick an account I want to save. There we go. And go ahead and save that again. All right, now at this point, it will get an email, it will have a link, and we'll just make sure that everything looks good there in a, in a second. It's being a little slow, there it comes in. And there's my email. So you can see that I've got okay, account ID equals, uh, oh, I have no equal sign. Let me go ahead and fix that. That's why we test it. All right, now while I'm here on this next test, I'm also going to want to go ahead and do some additional things. There's two phases to getting deep linking working. The first phase is I want to go ahead and navigate to the right screen. The second phase is going to be to select to pass a, the parameter in, convert it into a variable, and then use that variable for goodness. All right, so let's do the first phase first. Let's make sure we can navigate to this screen right here. To do that, I'll select my app on the left side, and I'll use this start screen parameter. Uh, now, the start screen parameter is a relatively new addition to Power Apps uh, within the last year or so. And it allows us to go ahead and navigate to a certain screen, saying, what screen do you want to start at? Now, before, you have to kind of put timers in there and all these kind of things to make this work. Now it's a lot easier. I can say if, oh, there we go, parm, okay, and I'll do a double, uh, open parenthesis, double quote, and that parm I created was called account ID. Whatever I typed on the opposite side of that question mark is what I'm typing in here. 
And uh, what I want to do is I want to find out if it's blank. It is blank. There we go. So if it's blank, and I really want the opposite, I want to make sure it's not blank, right? That somebody passed a value in there. So I'll say not blank. With an exclamation point, you can also put a not before that, but the exclamation point does the inverse. So if it's not blank, let me put one more close parenthesis, comma, and my screen name is going to be SCRDV. Otherwise, go to SCR main. Make sure I close the mouth of close parentheses. There we go. That should be about it now. Let's go ahead and save it and then publish it. Waiting for it to save here. There we go. And then publish it. Wait about 10, 20 seconds while we're moving on to other things here also. All right, so I've got the variable now uh, directing me to the right screen. So if this is successful, I should be routed over to this screen we're seeing right now. Let's make a quick change. Hit save. Okay, I'll wait for that email to come in. Or I can also just click on the old email as well. So if I go back over here again, there we go. There's my pragmat win. I'll click on the email. Here we go. Open up the account ID. Hopefully, it routed me to the correct page, and it did. The next stage is using that capability we just saw in that para, uh, params uh, function to basically select the correct record on the right. So that's our easier step. We're going to create a variable, first of all, that uses the same logic. So I'll go ahead and copy and paste this. Go over to my on, on start property, and let's localize the variable. So right at the end here, I'll put a semicolon, paste in that. Now versus doing this, I'm just going to type in set, open parenthesis, get rid of that, and we'll call this a var account, something like that. I'll do comma, and I'm going to do a lookup against the account record and say, hey, is this account here or not? So let's go ahead and do a lookup against the account record. There we go. And I want to go ahead, and, and it's not quite accounts plural there. There we go. And I want to say account is equal to, and then we'll go with that param account ID. There we go. I think I'm missing some closed parentheses. There we go. Oh, let's see what I have here. And I need one more of the if statement. Okay. Looks like I almost have it. The last thing I'm missing, notice when I hover over this, this is a GUID in this case. So I need to tell it that it is a GUID also on my case as well. That matches both sides of the equal sign now are matching. It's going to come in as a string in the, in the parameter. Uh, it, even though it is a GUID, it's coming as a string. That converts it into a GUID, passes it to my dataverse as a GUID also, and gives me back the full account record. So this variable called var account will have the entire account record for what I'm passing in uh, selected. And I'm localizing that variable into var account so that I can use that for other things. The next step I want to use is I want to, now that I have the variable in place, I want to make sure that the item property of this form is that variable. Now I'm putting everything on the same page here, but I could truly just have it on different pages, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but if I go to the item property of the form, right now it's based on the gallery being selected, but instead I'll go ahead and say var, oh, what did I call that? I think I called it var account. There we go. And the last step is when you select an arrow, instead of just passing that in, I want to make sure I, I, I use the same code there as best essentially. So the on select, I'm not just going to edit that form, but before that, I'm going to go ahead and set that variable, var account to be equal to this item. So in other words, I'm gonna select the entire account and put in that same variable that I'm using for the parameter. So that way, as I do this, it should still work. You see, it's basically still working. I just had to kind of rewire it slightly. I just had to make this gallery load the variable and this form read the variable so then I can hit that save button right there. All right, let's save it. Let's publish it and let's try it one more time. I also alternatively could also have made um, the default property here equal to that as well. So I could have made that var account if I wanted to, and that will always select the proper account here as well. But you see it's kind of making things a little bit goofy here, pragmatic works, it is, it is selecting it, it is going up, not up top here, so it is kind of just re reshuffling things every time I select that. So if that's okay with you, you can do that also. I have another video on how to make kind of use that default property there. All right, so now that we've got that, let's save it one more time. 
Uh, let's go ahead and publish it one more time. And let's see the fruits of our labor now. All right, so again, the, just to re recap this concept in that 30 seconds here, I made this selection, go ahead and set a variable value of our account. Not needed if you separate these, these, these screens into two. I just want to make sure I, 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 I support this form other ways also. Then the form, I have the item property equal to var account. That basically is a variable that I'm passing in, and then I'm, I'm setting, that, I'm setting that, that variable, that parameter, converting it into a variable on the onStart property of the app. So right here, I'm converting it into the onStart property, and I'm using a var account. So I'm, I'm pass, taking the account ID, converting it to var account, which is the entire record, and that form now has var account. Also, this is using var account as well. All right, so now that I published it, let's go ahead and go back to that previous link. You know, it knows it already has account ID, so I'm just gonna go ahead and refresh this now. And, oh, let me just let me see if it actually is the right version. Okay, and it's not working. So let's go ahead and debug what's going on here. You see, it looks like everything is working except for that. So let's double check and see what's going on here, because it is, it is selecting the right one here. Uh, let me try the link in the in the this right here just to make sure. Okay, so it is going to let's see that that account would have been now when is is quite a bit down here, so it must have got the right account. So a few things we can do to debug this. Uh, what I do is because it's hard to tell, you can't actually it has to do that, do that just at runtime. So I need to go ahead and actually put the account ID here so I can see that it actually is receiving something. So let me go ahead and drop a label in here. And I'll call this var account. And here's where people make, make mistakes. I'll put, let's put this account name here. All right, so we can kind of see that it's using the correct account. There we go. It is, look like, yeah, it is definitely using the right account now. So a few mistakes that people might make in many cases. It is case sensitive. So if I don't, if on the app here, I want to make sure that everything lines up. So I have account ID, uppercase there, account ID uppercase, all right. So if that, if that parameter is blank, take that parameter, okay, pop it into here. That looks good. Then on the receiving side, I want to make sure that, okay, this looks all good. So I should be good to do it in our test. Let me go ahead and publish this one more time. And I'm going to use the uh, text label there to debug, is it receiving the parameter? And that's what you have to kind of do sometimes when you're, when you're working these parameters because it, it, it works only in runtime. It was working in design time, but it's tough to kind of put this bad boy up here to put extra parameters in that. So let's go ahead and send this in again. Okay. You'll notice I need to wait for the publish to happen. So I, I'm, I'm, I don't have a label yet. So I'll, re, I'll refresh this again, and I should have the label now. Oh, nope, not quite yet. There it is. I did get, let me try, uh, this was for, this item changes, it doesn't tell me which account it is. So let me go ahead and resubmit the email again. Oh, it did work, Warren Bank. I'm gonna hit save. Okay, waiting for the email here. So take a mental note on Warren Bank. There's Warren Bank. All right, I'm gonna click on this. App opens, Warren Bank is there. So it is getting the record. The challenge that we have right now is a simple Power Apps challenge. This form is not in edit mode right now. So because it's not in edit mode, I need to go through and actually convert it into edit mode so Warren Bank comes up. So that, that's what the purpose of this little, little label was here. We're right there at the finish line. But I just want to show you some, some things that could go wrong here as you're doing deep linking. So my form name is called Form 1. Great name there, Brian. But what I'm going to do is if this is blank, all right, right here, I'm also going to do one additional thing, and that's to make the form an edit form instead. Form one, Oop. there we go, looks good. All right, should be able to work with that now. Let's go ahead and save that again. And then publish that again. And again, we have to wait about 30 seconds here. I think it was the last account I did was Warren Bank. So let's see if we now get that working. So again, the, the, the point of this was to kind of show you that deep linking, it's not going to automatically set your form to edit, to edit mode. This form can be in two modes, right? It could be in new mode or edit mode. And in my case, the default normally is edit mode, by the way. But in my case, because it's a new place where I can go ahead and add new records, I had the default in new mode set so that all that uh, start screen thing I just did, that, all, that um, the on start I just did, is going to reset that back. 
So let's go back here. Let's refresh this. And there we go. So Warren Bank is now here. Warren Bank's here. And we can see it's also selected on the left side. So success! All right. Well, in this video, we showed you how to do that deep linking. There's a lot more you can do in this. It can be used, I just used it for emails, but we can also use it for in app notifications. So imagine you get a little chime on your phone, you tap it, that tap could also open the app up and deep link to the proper page there with a notification framework and power apps. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe. That keeps us motivated, but also tells us that we want to go ahead and add more like this. Have a great day, and thank you so much for watching this video. Goodbye.